Um, I don't know if I, I touched this question, but um, what's the like the expenses that you you, you deal with like in traveling and all that stuff? Bodybuilding is incredibly expensive. So I know for females, our suits run about fifteen hundred dollars. Um, and then your Airbnb or hotel, which I usually Airbnb because I like to have a kitchen because I have to be on meal prep. I've stayed in hotels and my whole food has spoiled before and I don't have a way to cook, which I don't like. And then flights, if you're going to a show, local shows are a lot cheaper because a lot of times, you know, they're in your city or a place you can drive to. And, um, for a regional show, I don't, you don't need to be there for a full week before you compete, you know, so the hotel expenses aren't as much as they are for like a national show. If you're flying across the country, you want to be there for enough time where the water from the flight falls off before you have to compete so that your body's not in complete shock when you're going into manipulating it. Um, but then there's, there's jewelry, there's your tan, there's entry fees. The entry fees for North Americans, I think were like $350 at a vision. Um, makeup if you don't know how to do your own and then um photo shoots if you want to do any of those or something to consider but the main cost for females are travel and bikini you know your actual suit and then your coach is an expense that you have to budget into like a monthly expense mm -hmm. for a coach that knows how to direct you yeah uh, i don't know what to say that's a lot <laughs> it is yeah that's a lot that's a lot you, you ain't never thought about, let me just stay fit instead of, you know, competing and stuff like that. So I actually said that if I did not go pro at my last show that I was going to be finished with competing, but right. I'm a pro. So now I'm like, okay, well, now I got it, right? I can't be a pro that never competes. But I also fell right. back in love with it. My last prep, I had been really burnt out from previous preps because of how hard they were on my body. But since yeah. I got my hormones healthy and my 2022 prep wasn't near as bad as I'm used to, I, I did fall back in love with bodybuilding. Hmm. Like how the prize money for women is just so low. Well, because people come to see the big boys, you know, yeah. it is what it is. We know that when we enter the show, so yeah. we still choose to do it. I, it, I wish yeah. it was more, especially at the Olympia level. Um, like a more direct ratio of like, Hey, they bring in this percent of the fans. They deserve this percent of the prize money. But, um, you know, again, it's just one of those things. Hopefully it'll get better with time, but I doubt it. I mean, I don't know, like, you know, with the guys, you know, I, you know, I, I get it, but I don't get it. Like what's so fascinating about the guys compared to the women, it's, you know, cause there, there are a lot of uh, bodybuilder fans out there. It's not like, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's the, the low key. That's the thing. Yeah. They don't, I, I don't really. I don't think that because I, I used to um I remember they had like this video store on with fem with female bodybuilders and different type of stuff. And you know, it'd be like different type of men would go to this store, like this video store, and they would be have like business suits and stuff like that. This was like in like I think in the nineties and closed down in the two thousands. But it it was kind of like like different videos of exotic female bodybuilding, you know certain mm -hmm. things about you know, you know it it it, it was just interesting because it, it it was like, you know there there were a lot of fans but they weren't out there like that, so yeah, yeah so I like experienced that a little bit too. <laughs> I get a lot of yeah. um like. I, I wear a lot of sweaters and sweatshirts because if I go out in public, especially when I'm lean and you can see like my arms, um, people want to come up and ask if they can like touch me. I'm like, please don't. I'm just a person. Like, please don't touch me. I don't, <laughs> don't know. Right. You. Or, um, I get, I get looked at, you know, like they'll just stare, just stare at you. And I'm like, stop freaking staring at me. Um, so I just wear sweaters so that people don't. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. But yeah, I it's mean, definitely it, uh, interesting. I think you know. I think the when they're staring, they, they're like, they they don't know whether to approach you, but they they want to say something. Because sometimes I'm not gonna lie. I remember one time I was passing through like this gym, and I seen this lady on a treadmill, and she was running and stuff. Her legs was big and. 
I'm like looking at it. when you look at it, it's like you're you're a bit mesmerized by that. So you know, okay. but then but then it's like you you have to be kind of a bit cautious because you don't want to scare the person. The guy sitting okay. was sitting like in in the in the gym. He's looking at me, so I had to just walk away and stuff. But <laughs> you know, there's times that I've seen you know I've seen women with muscles and stuff. I you know some of them I, I've talked to a little bit, and that was it. But Never, never that further, 